Yeah, yeah. That guy sounds good. All right, how's everyone doing? Great. Ready to rock and roll? Ready. Oh, yeah. This is a great day. All right. Yes, it is. We get some energy in here. <laughs> Smiles. Some friendly faces. That comes when it's warm. I love it. <laughs> so we have a big thank you to Todd here. He has provided lunch for everyone. So there's some food on the counter, bottles of water, chips, you name it. And uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to you for a moment, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, help yourself and, and eat away. Whatever's left, you get to take home. So you might as well eat it. Um, I'm Todd Palmer. This is just to get to know who I am meeting. I'm a home inspector. And so we have our business we've been doing up north and down San Pete County. And we're trying to kind of fill in the middle of it. So we're just getting our name out there, putting a face to the name. I've left some rat cards and business cards on the tape, on the chairs for you. Feel free to take one. I'll leave some extras. I also brought some coupon cards, 10% off. If they turn them in to save you and your clients a little money, um, if they'd like them. I mean, we like to save money. I know I do. Um, we've been doing this for a few years now and we really enjoy it. And I think the thing that I enjoy the most out of it is getting to know your clients. And I enjoy going over an inspection report with them. I enjoy talking to them. Most of what goes on a home inspection report is not a big deal. They get worked up, they get excited about it, and I really enjoy that interaction of talking to them about it and kind of walking them through it. And I think that's probably what I enjoy the most out of it. And I don't know, I've been doing this for a while. Is there any questions? I don't want to take too much of your time, but... Um, I just want to say something about Todd is that I've, I've been using Todd for quite a while now um, at his inspection company. and. Uh, what I appreciate a lot is that when I meet with a client and we go over there and do the inspection, he's very down to earth. Um, he doesn't let it get all wound up <laughs> over little things that don't matter. Um, and I appreciate that a lot. And I've also had several uh, listings that I had listed that I could see probably needed some work done and talk to the clients um, and actually we had a we had Todd come and do an inspection um, from the seller side so that then we fixed what was wrong in the house and then when the buyers came through we said there's already been an inspection done and here you go and and it worked really very very well because then there wasn't any surprises and my sellers were we're happy to do that. Okay, so it's just a little something that he does that I think uh, that I appreciate. Another thing that he does that not a lot of companies do is he also does sewer sculpting. And it used to be that I'd have to go find a sewer someone uh, from a different company to do that um, when there's a lot of trees in the yard. And, and his company does that as well. So anyway, that's thank you, Todd. Eat two sandwiches. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, my 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 outlook on inspection is I want to be thorough. I don't want to miss anything, but I also want to put a lot of common sense into it. You know, there's been more than once that I've kind of fixed the problem and then showed it to them, and away we went. You know, and so I think there's definitely room for common sense. I've been around construction my whole life, and. Uh, I know what goes on behind the little checks that goes in the box, and uh, I think that's important when we go about this. And as far as the sewer scope, we do do all of it. In fact, our office up in Brigham City, um, we do a lot of meth testing up in that area of apartments, mainly student housing and things. And we're surprised at how much of that we find up there. But that's kind of probably 80% of what goes on up there, um, along with our inspections. But um, we also offer that and. And I think that's about it. I hate talking about myself, so enjoy your sandwiches and, and give me a call, and, and we'll we'll have some fun together and see if we can help you out. So, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.
Hey, you gotta love that. Great testimonial there, which is huge. I've always found uh, with home inspections, you want them to be thorough and honest, right? But you also want to help them. Have you ever, I mean, one thing that comes up on every inspection is, well, the outlets aren't grounded the right way or whatever. You ever had those claims that just go nuts? Like, oh my gosh, I can't, or the step's an eighth of an inch too high, or it's great when you have a home inspector there that keeps them calm. So thank you so much for the lunch, too. Uh, let's see, we've got Josh here yeah. from our partners. Uh, stand up, and uh, you're on. Yeah, um, John, come on up. So... As I know a lot of you, there's a lot of new faces too, though. Um, so my name is Josh Kawhi. I'm with American Home Shield, also it's the Century 21 Home Protection Plan. And today we have the um, John Herman, who is the our new regional manager. And so it's you know it's good to have John here with us today. Um, but really, just wanted to talk about do a quick pointer. Um, how many of you know what Reiki is? Has anybody used Reiki before? Yeah, you've read about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've talked about it. <laughs> so, you guys, so Reiki is an awesome service for your new buyers. How many of you have bought a house and moved into it and, and used the Reiki where you actually said, I'm going to Reiki this house because I don't know who has it? Has anybody ever done that? Person, I've never done that. But I think it's a great idea. I did it last week after we talked, and it was 175 bucks. Okay, for four locks to get them. And that was that with us? No. Okay. Okay. So okay. So, you better be so with us, yeah. With us, it's just about 75. Yeah. So you guys, this is a great service for follow-up or even a gift to your buyers. And so you, as an agent, can say, hey, you know, with your American Home Shield Home Warranty that we provided for you. For $75, the cost of a service fee, you get six locks done, and then they get four keys. So it's a $175 value for $75. Um, it's, a lot of people are interested in it because they don't know who has keys. I mean, it, I know uh, I know for a fact right now, I have a neighbor and a cousin that has a key, but if I sold my house, those new buyers probably wouldn't want them to have keys. <laughs> so, um, but you guys really, the other tough, the other, talking point is I want to let you know if you do have questions just call me like my cards are upstairs they're down here you'll see me in the offices um, let me know how I can help out really that's my job is to help you maintain that relationship with your client and if anything goes bad these guys will hold my feet to the fire so you have great support and you know, I'm here to work with you and help you out maybe I can so is there anything you wanted to yeah, just just a quick follow up on, on the Reiki and thank you for the uh, introduction and for the invitation to uh, tag along today. Uh, just a quick follow up on, on the Reiki. One of the things that is important to us about it, in addition to providing that first initial uh, positive experience for the homeowner, uh, it also is an opportunity for them to learn in a non-stressful, non-urgent situation how the home warranty works. Uh, so that once they do the rekey, the easy process a week or so after moving in, if they have that water heater issue or that uh, uh, furnace issue months down the road, all, it's not a new experience for them. They've already been in contact with us. They know how to request service. They know how the, how, how the technicians and the contact uh, service delivery works. So, so for us, it's, it's partially about uh, providing uh, a good value right off the bat, making you look good right after the closing, but it's also about training the homeowner how the warranty works. There's double benefit to that. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. So let us know. We'll be in touch. And thanks for letting us come in today. Yeah, thank, thank you. Very awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. I'm glad you went into more detail about the Reiki because at first I was like, oh, I'm just testing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were saying Reiki. They were saying, yeah. 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 Oh, my wife. Yeah. 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 Okay, quick, I'm just going to pass this around. This is a summary sheet that we've created. Something that is so helpful is when we have all the information right up front so we can be as proactive as possible in your title circumstances. So, title transactions. I'll pass this around. We can send you a soft copy if you would like. Take a look. We've added at the bottom an area where you can send us information about your client. If you're really into profiling, personality profiling, you can tell us that so that when we reach out, we know exactly how to communicate with them to best meet their needs. Okay. It's very cool. Okay. Thanks. Give her a round of applause. Hey, we 
are very lucky today to have Jessica Terry speaking to us. Um, I hope, and I know you're here, to, to hear from her, which is exciting. But again, thank you for doing this. We appreciate it. A couple of quick observations that I've had um, of Jessica and what she does. But a couple of things that I really appreciate. She is highly committed to treating her business like a business, which on, on, frankly is rare in our industry from time to time. And every one of us can learn something from that. And I see the way she runs her business, runs her team, cares about the image of her, of her team and her business, and it's second to none. So it's awesome to see that from her. Second, she works her sphere of influence, which is huge. I think the quote she said to me the other day was, I don't want to be calling strangers for the rest of my life. I want to talk to people that I know, which is remarkable and important. And then finally, the third thing is just, I know she is absolutely, despite the success that she's had and the great things that she's already accomplished, I know she's committed to continuing uh, for massive growth. And so uh, with that, we're very fortunate that you're here. I'm going to turn the time over to you, and thank you for doing this today. Hey. Do you want this board erased? No, okay. okay. All right. We might use a portion of it. Okay. Thank you. That was very kind. That was nice. So I want to start, guys, by letting you know this is actually not going to be the Jessica show. I want you guys to be involved. I want you guys to ask questions. Where I'm at in my business today, you guys might not be in that same place. So the, the struggles that I'm having currently, you might be past those struggles, or you just maybe haven't got there yet. So I think it's really, really important. So you guys might be happy you came, you might be disappointed that you came, but I, I hope you get inspired at the same time. I want more so for you guys to get what you need out of this, depending on where you're at in your current business. I wanna tell you guys a little bit of a story, actually. I Anyone familiar with Journey to Mastery, Coldwell Banker? Okay, a few of us. So Russ definitely spearheaded that and um, Russ is the one that actually taught me when I first got into the business uh, back in 2005. And guys, I came from the, I was a paralegal for eight years in real estate law. So I came in thinking that was pretty cool. And I got in and didn't know anything. I was like, what is sales? I had no idea. And it was really, really scary. And I had a ton of questions. And there was a girl, do you remember Rita? That was me? Okay. So Rita was there and she had been in car sales her entire life. So she knew a lot more than I knew about sales. So I was constantly, in every single class, I was like, I've got a question, I've got a question. So she used to tease me, literally. Hi, my name's Jessica and I have a question. And I just want to be clear that she's not in the business anymore, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important. Awesome. I want you guys to ask questions. I promise it will lead to, to success for you guys. So is everyone committed to asking questions and being engaged? Yes. 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 Awesome. We're going to do things a little bit different. Jess, can you help me? Um, hey, Jessica. Yes. You the guy there in the front next to you. Just introduce him to you. Oh, yes. this is my awesome husband, Jared Schneider. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was trying to hide in the front. I, saw that. I tried to hide in the back, but Jessica brought me up. Oh, no. I'm That's honored true. to be here. Thank okay. you for having me. So, actually, I'm going to have Jess stand up in just a minute. Um, first, I also want to let you guys know that I am really excited to be up here with you guys. Um, I know Jeremy said it was me doing a favor, but I, I'm excited, you guys. I have a huge passion for this industry. I love this industry. I want to work with other agents that are awesome, and I know we are all here. I sat in that seat so many times with such a desire to grow and get to that next level. So, I know that some of you guys are feeling that inside and not knowing how to get there. Um, I love this industry. It's completely changed my life. I also want to know, let you know that it's okay if we disagree. I'm okay with that. Okay. I know that there are a lot of different ways to get to the top. And my way might not be your way. And that's, that's completely fine. So take what you want and let go of what you don't because it, it's okay. You know, we can disagree on that. Um, who in here has been in the business for less than three years? Okay. So three to ten years? Okay. Over ten years? Oh, wow. there's a diverse group for sure. So can we all agree that we're probably at a different place in our journey? Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. 
And I think it's really important for you sitting there, especially people I think that are a little bit newer, meaning under 10 years, when I say newer, to understand and not compare yourself to me or compare yourself to other people because we are at a different place in our journey. I think competition is good to look at me and say, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. That's awesome. That competition is healthy. But to compare yourself, if you've been in the business for a year, you can't jump to where I am. And there's always exceptions. And there's someone has. So don't take that too seriously. I know. But you will probably give shitty service, right? I mean, seriously, if you're jumping from one to 75 or 100 transactions, without going through the journey that I've been through, do you think that you might be skipping some steps? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I promise. So just be patient with yourself and know that it's a journey and you have to learn along the way. So Jess, now, I would like to know what you guys, we're gonna do things a little bit different and then I am gonna wrap back around and go over some of the lessons that I've learned over the years. I wanna know what you guys are struggling with, if you have questions or just a topic that is important to you that you need clarification on. Dave. So this time of year, the big question for me is always, do I give gifts or do I not give gifts? Or do I give closing gifts? And you always seem to have, well, once you about let my mouth on fire with that little caramel, but you always have these two things. <laughs> do they work for you? Is it worth the money you put into it? Why do you do that? Would you, would awesome. you not, if you have the choice? Do you think it's a good idea for me to give out caramels that are, um, have an arrow and not tell people. Huh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dave. That was so weird. I'm sure my clients do you appreciate test, those. Test your treats first. Yeah. So, so <laughs> gifty. We'll circle to that. Give me some more, guys. Um, I'm very scared to, to hire an assistant. I just want a perfect one because I see a lot of realtors are hiring and they're leaving after a month, and that makes me so nervous. I hired one and it didn't work that well. So I'm into that stage, but I know I need to go out. You're perfect assistant. You can't have mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is an awesome. Okay, so assistance. That's perfect. What else? Where you uh, see the biggest return regarding investing your money, depending on like what field of marketing, like some stuff like either internet leads or flyers or whatever it is. So mainly just investing your money. So ROR, like the rate of return. Yeah. Great question. Yes. Uh, balancing time. Balancing and prioritizing. You guys have great questions. Lines. These are awesome. Okay, balance. Okay. One thing you could change if you would go back to you 10 years ago. Oh, man. I'm so bitch. I'm so bitch. Okay. Um, regrets, maybe? Or just things yeah, I would do different? Yeah. Okay. Things that you would tell Jessica 10 years ago. Okay, got it. How do you find the perfect lender? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> 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 you should find the perfect husband. Yeah. <laughs> what else, guys? Time management. I mean, you know, it, that seems to be a big problem for a lot of. Like, Especially we're a new mess, agents. Right? Well, a lot of agents yeah. are just, they get a deal, they chase it to the end and forget everything else they're doing. So, really, how, you know, how are you balancing your prospecting time to all of that? Just time management. Yeah. Another one will be like your strengths and your weakness, and like how you, like, not just balance it out, but like focus on, like, should I. Continue just increasing my shrimps, or should I focus on my weakness? And it's, I, I saw a video of that on YouTube by Gary Vaynerchuk. I love about, Gary V. It's all about offense, but then I'm other people say you want to have defense too. So he's really, really for focusing on your strength versus right. your weaknesses. Right. Um, yeah, I like that. I like Gary V a lot. Okay. You guys have not listened to him. I oh my gosh, I feel bad for my husband. I constantly <laughs> listen. Like I really him. think you should. Probably like him. <laughs> I really like him. What did you have, Rob? I was just going to point out. So strength and weaknesses, yeah. In your, you know, just even in your time in the industry, it seems like agents sometimes become the biggest hurdle of the transaction. A, they don't know very much. They have to come across like they know everything. 
So they're afraid to make a mistake or afraid to let a, a client know that they may not know the answer. And then vice versa, an agent that has been in the industry a, long, a while has to show that they are, you know, I'm the best, so I know the answer. So I'm telling you this, therefore you should, you should come out. I mean, when you're talking about asking questions, you ask, I mean, you are very knowledgeable about this, and you ask questions. Okay, so you never I stop growing. Rob, how much do I call you? Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> she calls a lot. But that's you guys, a good and a lot of people actually don't like to call Rob. Sorry, Rob. Because they think, you know, he's Summer. extremely detailed. And for me, I want the details. I want both outcomes. I don't want to know what just is going to get the deal done. I really want to know the legal answer behind it and the results of both paths. Rob is, I call him constantly. So I'm not clear on your question. Well, it's more so just, I guess you could say, what have you done to get out of your own way as an agent? Mm -hmm. And like really, ego, is that what you're talking about? Could be, yeah. Just mm -hmm. putting the client first versus yes. all the other stuff. Okay. So put ego slash relationship. Okay. Is there anything else that? <coughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I'm sure you have, you know, like better months than others. But so I guess that's like my thing. You know, I'll hit a, a, a great month and then it's. Okay, you know, I'll kind of close this month, and then, so how do you, how do you remain there and keep the consistency to continue building over time your business? Consistency. Yeah. I'll be really honest, I haven't fully figured it out. I'm just more up here probably with doing this, whereas some people are more down. But I'm still working on that, just consistency. Like my third quarter was awesome, and my fourth quarter is not as good as my third quarter. For sure, but I think a lot of times when you have a really good quarter before, you your next quarter sometimes I know not for everyone, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. Also, is because you get really busy and you don't process. That's really what happens. I think that's what happens. So, is there anything else that's really important that you guys want to make sure that we cover? Yeah. I think one of my biggest problem and is the main source of a good income is SOA. I hate okay. So I, I always feel that I'm bugging them. Okay. And because maybe I put myself too much in that place. I, I don't want to invite all the other friends. Say, hey, you have business for me. Yeah. No, I get it. I was like that forever. I mean, I was, for 10 years, I did not call my SOI. There's wow. a regret. Okay? I mean, seriously, that that <laughs> is my regret. It's ego. Yeah. I think it's ego. I think you're, um, and maybe it's not for you, for me it was. So I'll answer for me personally. I think it's ego that, what are they going to think of me? Why do, what, they're going to think that I, I'm not doing well. They're not going to, I personally, for me, think it was an ego thing for me. Um, I don't know what it is for you personally, but we can definitely talk about it. So. Maybe, yeah, well, behind my head, it is that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yes, so SOI and why don't we call them? Okay, so we're going to circle back to these. And if you guys think of some as we go, just, just raise your hand and ask me. Um, so for gifting, Dave, you asked that question. I have shifted my business a lot in the last two years. I just came back into the business. So I started in 2005. My little girl, Rose, was born in 2011. And I stayed home for three years. Guys, I came from a very transactional business, so not referral-based. I never called my SOI. I called for sell by owners and expires, and that's it. That's all I did before for 10 years. And I could never get past that 10 to 12 number, ever. I mean, I just could not get past that number. And um, so the answer to your question, Dave, is I have just started gifting and doing that in the last two years. Um, a lot of you guys know I'm, I'm with the core training, so it's, it's completely different. I went from Mike Ferry and, and similar coaches, not all with Mike Ferry, but similar coaches, nothing like Buffini or anything, so nothing to do with relationship-based. It was all a lot of cold calling. Even though they tell you to call your SOI, they focus a lot more on cold calling. So that's where I, or maybe I wasn't ready to call my SOI. I don't know exactly what it was. 
but I remember my coach recently, about two years ago, said, well, you need to take your client to lunch. I'm like, why in the world would I go to lunch with a client? <laughs> you know, I mean, I just didn't have that mindset. Why would I give them a gift? Why would I do that? I just, I wasn't trained that way, and I just didn't do that. So gifting is huge. Yes, we do a ton of gifting. We have our VIP gifting program where we have, let's say, like our top 50 people in our life. It can be business people. It can be your top 50 clients. And we gift and love on them a ton. Our goal is to create channel accounts to get business from those people. <coughs> Versus getting one transaction a year, how great would it be if you had 20 people give you five deals a year? Would that be good? Yes? Oh, no. For sure, yeah. So it's creating those relationships. Maybe it's with CPAs. Maybe it's with attorneys. Maybe it's with... Um, just a good client of yours. And so the gifting program, it takes time, but yeah, I, I think gifting for sure pays off. It's not all about what am I gonna get in return. Um, we are running a business, but like my sister, we, we almost have to cut her off, huh? Yeah. She, yes. <laughs> she loves gifts. Well, so you can't give like everyone gifts. <laughs> she really, really loves her gifts. So, yes, I think they pay off. Like right now for Christmas, we have about how many people did we do? 72. 72 people that we are delivering gifts to just throughout the holidays. So wow. it's just something. So yes. Did Can I get on that list? <laughs> You're on that list. Am I? Yes. You have oh, cool. So, oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, somebody choose. Do you go personally? Do you send a mail? Of my mail? Um, so the ones in Eagle Mountain we decided to do by mail because yeah. it's kind of far. It's really far. <laughs> um, but I'm delivering them personally. My goal is to get face to face with them. My goal is to, so I know a lot of, maybe not a lot of you guys, but I know a big belief is you should not be face to face with people unless they're willing to do business in the next seven to 10 days. Guys, that is BS. It is. I mean, treat these people like human beings. Why are we, I mean, you're not gonna do, be in front of them unless they're gonna give you a deal in seven to 10 days. That's crazy. I know this last Saturday, you made it really fun and you took Rose with you and gifted her. And I think people like to see that where it's like, hey, this is Jessica, not as Jessica the realtor, but Jessica the mom. I do both. And my little girl's here and she's barefoot and cold. And <laughs> <laughs> this is our last box of chips and salsa. <laughs> yeah. No. I did. I no, took I her just with me just because made I made it a fun day. Yeah, it is. And people get to know you better. So when you do drop off gifts, you ever ask them about business? Do you ever no. say, hey, no, I don't buy or sell at all? Yeah. A lot of times they bring it up um, and they will mention something about real estate. That just tends to happen. And to be truthful, I actually try to skirt it a little bit. I'm not there to talk about real estate. I'm there to give them a Christmas gift. So, yeah. Give us an example of what's gifting. What do you um, so our Christmas gifts are um, Trader Joe's chips and salsa and um, two things of salsa and just chips and it's a cute bag with a bow and then we have a Christmas card on it. And then we've done for some of our attorneys, we've done really cool speakers, like $100 speakers that are customized that has a quote on it with our logo on the bottom. Um, we've done a lot of we've gifts. We've done phone chargers, uh, cord wraps. We have, a, we have a range of gifts that are from like a dollar to a hundred dollars and we can just if choose. they're on our vip then i mean journals for mm -hmm. business people so um we have cheesy gifts we have like caramels that we give out like we're showing homes or meet with a seller that's only three dollars so i mean we are mindful you can't just go spend a ton of money and you need to be so yeah does that help answer the question okay um, assistant, you, you mentioned assistant. Okay, guys, I think with the assistant, it is, you do a lot of business. Do you not have assistant? No, I'm the one. How many hours do you work? Eight hours. No, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm all week? Eight to ten hours a, a day or so. A day. Yes, I do everything. Oh my gosh, it's good and I learned everything, but it's time for me to be able to get from 35 closings to 50 to 100. Oh my gosh, you guys. I have a huge, huge belief that at some point you have to take the risk. You have to make you have to make that. You you just you just do it. 
I mean, that's all I can tell you. You cannot grow without it. Right. So here's another thing is I, Delilah and Jess are um, on our team and they work strictly on admin customer service. And then it's just my sister and I. So we're not a big team. It's um, basically two salespeople and then Jess and Delilah. And could I do the same amount of business with less? I, I could, guys. And I would not give good service. That's my belief. I'm not saying you don't give good service, but the service that I want to give, I could not do it without my team. I couldn't do it. And so, and also just time. You know, you have two sacrifices in life, and my belief is it's time and it's money. I'm willing to sacrifice some of my money in order to provide better service and in order to get to that next level. I think a team is the only way to do it if you don't want to, if you're a mom, if you're a wife, you know, if you don't want to give up your life. And if you want to provide good service, you just have to do it. That's my only answer. Just do it. Do you recommend, because I've been interviewing LRA Realtors, they have assistance with, with their license and some assistance with our license. So Jess has her license. Delilah's getting her license. I would never, ever have someone that is being an admin and a sales agent at work. For me, that doesn't work. I'm sure it works for someone. I would never do that. Does that answer your question? Um, rate of return. For me, my business is 100% focused on referrals. You guys, I just like what I told Jeremy last week, I do not want to be calling people I don't know for the rest of my life. I want my phone to ring. Okay, I don't want to have to dial out. My phone, for the amount of time that I've been in the business, my phone should ring more than it does. It's because I was transactional for 10 years straight. I've only switched my business in the last two years. so. The biggest return is my SOI, for sure. Relationships, so gifting, and giving love to my clients, truly, being that resource for them is my biggest rate of return. I don't do, I do Zillow, um, but I don't do a ton of, well, I don't do any other online marketing. I mean, I, yeah. What you said, how often are you in touch with your SOI? So we do lots of gifting. So I send everyone in my database birthday cards with either a five dollar gift card. Um, so we're doing that. Call them twice a year. Okay, but I sure. mail to them every single year. I email to them. And you also call them on your birthday. Oh, and I also call them on their birthday too. So I have other systems in place that I'm not just. And when I call them on my birthday, you guys, I'm not talking about business. I'm calling to wish them happy birthday. When I'm calling them the other two times, I'm asking, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? And, it, and then I be quiet and see, and then they will. So I'm not saying that I don't ask for business. I absolutely do ask for business. Um, but I do it at the right time. I do not do it on their birthday, and I do not do it if I'm dropping off the Christmas gift. Can you do it at your closing gift? For sure. But I don't do it when I'm giving a Christmas gift. Okay. Um, balancing time. So for me, with balancing time, um, some of you may know, we've had a pretty crazy um, last four to five years, we've had some really serious health problems in our family. And so I have a different perspective on time. And I know a lot of people will say, well, I'm just going to give up my all for a year. I'll work 60 hours a week and that might work for you and that's okay. For me, I'm not willing to do that. I have a six-year-old little girl, I'm married, and if there's a week I have to work 60 hours, no problem. But I am just not willing. If it takes me a couple more years to get to where I want to go without giving up a year of my life, I, I, I'm okay with that. So balance, I think, comes down to priority and what are your priorities. Um, but it also comes down to you have to hire people. I'm willing to give up some of my money. A lot of people, I think, are a little too greedy, and I've been there too. Just give up some of your money, you'll get more in the end. So I think that's a really big big thing is if you can give up some of that money, it will free up your time. And guys, if you're not overworked working 60 hours a week, you're going to be so much better at what you do. I mean, you're going to be pleasant. You're going to be excited. You're not going to be exhausted. You're going to treat people so much better. So, yeah. I was just going to say, one of the things I know a lot of people step up with an assistant is as soon as I get some extra cash because oh, yeah. I can't really afford them right now. Um, but when I've done this, it's an I just wait for it to just jump. I didn't really have to do much going on at all. And that next year doubled my business. Just because, you know, we're a 
few months you spend training them it takes a little bit of time but then you're like make it <laughs> and yeah. you can do what you do best and that's get out there and I 100% agree and just make sure really quick and then I'll answer your question is you need to be training them you guys you can't just throw them in there and that's where where it's going to be it's tricky on your end because you're already doing a good amount of business and then now you have to take the time to actually train them so the first assistant is the best I mean what's awesome Delilah trained Jessica did I train you at all <laughs> <You're still training. laughs> yeah, I mean, so the first one is a little bit trickier because you do have to take the time um, and you have to be patient. I mean, your guys' first six months were rough, right? It was a wild ride. Yes. <laughs> but my expectations are super, super high. Like my standards are really, really, really high. And the systems, they had systems to plug into, but there's still so much to learn. And we're constantly improving them. So the biggest thing I can tell you guys, you can't get an assistant and then be like, here you go. If they quit or they're not a good assistant, my belief is it's your fault. And let me be clear, I've been through six. So it's been my fault a lot. I'm not putting the blame on any of you guys. I've been there and I truly believe one out of 10 might be their fault. If you train them right and you do the right thing, it should work for sure. Yes. What I was going to say was more than a comment not a question. Yeah. I, I remember uh, Robert Kiyosaki, mm -hmm. I think most people know, uh, wish that for that. He said at the beginning or at some point of his business, <coughs> he was a mess because he was trying to do everything on his own until he hired an accountant. And he said, I die and went to heaven because, <laughs> yeah. because you know, he learned the, the principle of delegation and hire somebody that some sometimes gonna do things better than you do in some areas because this is not your drink we are salespeople here then you hire assistants that are really good with numbers really good with paperwork it's gonna do even better than you do oh. and if you if so you true. train it like you said if you train it well hi, hire right train it well and motivate you're gonna have an assistant for time for I 100% so, agree and right. hey guys let me be really clear, every time I get involved, I screw stuff up. Every, do I know? Seriously, I do, you guys. Every single time I get involved, they're like, would you go away? You're just, you would go away. Like, I really, we should not be involved in that. Let them do it. I, I, I think we mess everything up. I really do. They do it way better than we do it. So, I know it's scary. My biggest thing for you guys, one of my biggest things, hire your assistant. Hire them and train them really, really well. Like it's so, so important. I can't stress that enough. Um, balancing time. So regrets. I'm going to cover regrets in a minute. Yeah, okay. so we got it Yeah. I don't. I don't. No. Um, so regrets, time management. I think that comes back to balancing time, having the team there. Who here does not have at least like a full-time assistant? Okay, so who here does have a full-time assistant or more? Okay, some of you guys aren't raising your hands. <laughs> okay, so the time management, obviously that will be when you hire people because then they free up your time so that you can actually make those calls. Because if you're doing everything, if you're your assistant, if you're making the calls, if you're organizing paperwork, doing gifting, they're not going to prospect you. There's no time. Or you're dropping the ball somewhere. So I think it's just really important to get clear on what's important to you guys. Time management, if you being home at 6 o'clock every night or maybe you work two late nights a week if that's really important and you be make it a, a standard for you you will make time management work i just want to say a comment about something that jess does that's really helpful for me as an assistant is um, she has blocks already blocked out in her calendar so she wants three appointments a day she blocks out from one to two three to four four to five and that's where we can put appointments. So that can be a listing appointment, buyer appointment, any type of an appointment with a face to face with someone. We know that we can put an appointment in there or she will put it in there. So she knows that that's 
when she's going to be out on an appointment. Uh, she also has it blocked out when she's going to make calls, when, you, you know, just little details that makes it so that you feel like it's really easy for her to know. I'm not, I'm done at five o'clock. If my last appointment is done at five, I'm done and I'm going home. So it's really nice for her, I feel, to to have that kind of idea already planned out. And there's always an exception to, a, to the rule, but yeah. it, it just is a clear way for you to see what your whole month is. That's yeah, right. it's basically we have a system for everything. If we don't have a system for it, I'm like, make a system for this. And it can be extremely simple. We have a system for everything, for our calls. My calls that I'm supposed to make on Monday, I have a list and she's given it to me. Because if I have to do it, I'm going to screw it up. If I have to go into top producer and pick who I'm going to call, I'm going to go, I'm going to call them, but not them, but them, but not them. So she gives me my list. Here's your people you need to call, call them. So it basically, they keep me structured so that I... So, yeah, so you, they, they become your full-time uh, accountability for Yeah, I know. I, I just paid them both 50 bucks because I didn't show up my trades. <laughs> so you're scheduled for everything. Everything you guys do is scheduled. Mm -hmm. Every, we have gotten so systematized that I'm going through these guys to uh, them for the schedule dates. I said, if that's how you're going to play, then I'm going to have my assistant call your assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to to see each other at movies. So strength and weaknesses. Um, my strength is probably that I have a huge passion for this industry, and not only a transaction, but to do it well. I think there's so many, and I know I've said this, there's so many shitty agents out there, guys. And it's kind of heartbreaking, because I think it ruins our industry. And let me be clear, too, there's a lot of amazing agents, too. There's so many amazing ones. I have, my strength is I have a huge passion for this business. I love it, and I want this industry I think we make a lot of money. Think, 500 grand, 15, 30, $35,000 with our title fees, 7%. I mean, $35,000 out of their equity. And we need to up our game, guys. We need to be better at what we do. And I I just have a huge passion for that, is doing better than the next person. Though. Because I want to change that seller's opinion on real estate agents because most of them have worked with other agents and they're so disappointed. No wonder we get a bad name because we're bad at what we do. So it's a huge passion. So that's my strength is I am cons systems constantly looking to improve. We change our systems, build on them. I don't change them. I build on our systems <coughs> really dialed in. Weakness, believe it or not, I'm not very disciplined. I'm, I could be more disciplined than maybe some people in here, but my mindset of really, I'm just discovering this this last year that I thought I was a really disciplined person. If you would have asked me last year, I would say I'm disciplined. I don't think I'm disciplined at the level I need. Um, ego relationships. Who asked that? Was that you or no? That was you, Rob. On just the ego, I think you kind of change as you go. I don't know if. The longer you're, the more you grow in your business, you kind of have to become a different person, I think. Um, I've become super humble. I think experiences in your life make you humble. But I think that um, I've just been, my eyes, and I'll go into this in just a minute, the coaching that I'm getting now is just about something different than this. So, um, maintain and consistency. And I think the question that he had maybe, which yeah. I'm interested in, is yeah. with strengths, strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We each have those. Yeah. And I actually heard that from Gary Vee oh, yes. when he was talking I about, yeah. I thought it was interesting because I had never heard that, that we all have our strengths and weaknesses. And his idea is that, hey, I, I don't care about my weaknesses. I'm going to find out what they are, but I'm not going to try to build those right. weaknesses. They are what they are. That's how I'm hardwired. And I'm going to build on my strengths and focus on that. And do you feel that way, I guess? Um, no, I don't do that. I focus on my strengths, but I focus on my weaknesses too. For me, I do both. Yeah, I do. If I'm not good at something, I become obsessed with it and get good at it. But then you're putting that time towards something that you could get a lot more out of it. Your I agree. There's an argument for that for sure. Right. I was yeah. curious. Just yeah, there is an argument for that for sure, and I don't know the answer. So I do both. I do. Um, maintain consistency. 
in the ups and downs, you have that question. Um, it comes down to having systems in place so that when you get really, really busy and you have a really good month, that you are not spending all your time with what my team does, which is a lot of the paperwork and the customer service and all of it that goes into that. So then you stop prospecting. I really think that is what, if I stay consistent with my prospecting, you will not have to in business. I don't stay 100% consistent with my with my prospecting, and that's why I sometimes have this. So, yeah. So just one more thing to comment from me regarding the weakness of yeah. the question. So uh, you mentioned that your one of your weakness is uh, being disciplined, right? So what do you do to like improve on that? Like, do you kind of like create like a like a system where if I don't do this, I'm gonna punish myself, or if I do this, I'm gonna reward myself? I'm just curious. Like, yeah, you know, no, that's like, a great question. And I just, so I, this is like a new thing for me again. Um, it could have even been last year or last week. You asked me and I probably would have changed my mind. I said to these guys, I said, Jess and Delilah, I'm not filling out my greatness chapter 100%. So I'm gonna give you $25 every single Monday if it's not 100% full. And so I guess I create accountability around it. Um, and that's, that's really, really good. So, um, let's see, SOI, why don't we call them? I kind of gave you my thoughts on that. Um, that for me, I don't know why you don't call them. I can just tell you, people want to, I mean, if your friend called you and asked you for a favor, would you be offended by it? Would it be bothering you? Well, if they haven't talked to me in 20 years, then they thought you, yeah, I'm going to be bothered. Okay. So this guy never talked to me for 20 years, and suddenly he called me asking for a favor. Okay. I, I would be. But if he hasn't called me for six months, and he called me, bloody, I need a favor. Like the other day, uh, a guy called me. In fact, I didn't. Well, okay, rethinking. Okay. And I have to be fast here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, this guy, he called me. I haven't seen him for, I haven't talked to him for five years. Mm -hmm. He called me and said, Vladimir, I'm uh, on a... I'm doing basements for, for people. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder if you know anybody that, that wants to do their basement. Right off the bat, say, hey, as a matter of fact, that I do. Look at that. He, here's their phone <laughs> number, call them. And he called me like a, a month later. Well, I, mean, I, I did their basement. They loved it. And, and thank you so much. Then I told them, well, I'm not still real estate. Look at that. Was when a call. Yeah. So, so I think it's more my ego. I think at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think at the end is the is the same reason we just have a different story behind it. For sure. And I get what you're saying. And when I shifted my business, I did because I remember this now. I did send out a letter because I was consistent always with mailing to my SOI. Is I did send out a letter and I apologized. And I said I apologize for not staying in touch better. I want you to know that I'm going to be. You know, I kind of did a little letter like that. And then my first call to people, it was softer than it is now. So if One you need thing to do that, that you're doing, time. though, it also, which is a huge change, is being uh, more personable with people. And I don't know if you're still doing it, but your letter of the heart that you send out, is that something that you're still doing? Or do you owe that money that. now? Done it a couple times a year, oh. yeah. So we're more focused on videos, sending emails with videos of just talking or okay. posting a video on our Facebook yeah. oh, page cool. or something like that. Yeah. More video based. So, uh, I, I believe what it comes down to is in uh, you know, the Anchor's book, uh, Million One Mindset, yeah. he talks about giving and receiving. Yes. And, and if we're, uh, if we think it's all about receiving where we're making a phone call, we're not going to want to make it. Yeah. But if we think make it about them. It, yeah. If it's all what about I do to help you? giving value, everyone wants to give, but no one can give if no one receives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Gary yeah. Vee, actually, just because I thought of this, he believes in you give, 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 and then you get. So, you know, I am a big believer in not just calling and being like, what do you have for me? I'm all about giving people other stuff, and we do. We give, give, give. People so, know why you're calling. They know they why you're calling. Like to ask them. Yeah. Right? What would be an example of a yeah, client? If they know you're real estate. Well, mm -hmm. What yeah. is it that you say when you call? So a lot of times you can go through, are you guys familiar with BORD? Mm -hmm. The acronym? So talk about their family, their occupation, their relationships, their dreams. You just have a conversation with them. 
basically, you know, hi Heather, this is Jessica. I saw you, or you know, I saw you on Facebook. I love seeing all your pictures. If it's a short conversation, I don't know them really well. I do just say, hey, I just wanted to remind you that I'm in the business. Do you know of anyone that's looking to buy or sell in the near future? And then I just be quiet. Gosh, is there anything I can do to help you? I know you sell lip sets. Or, you know, what can I do to help you? You know, if there's anything you ever need, please feel free to reach out to me. So I'm very, um, it's not scripted. I'm just calling to talk to those people. It's not a scripted call. I practice scripts, so I'm sure some scripts are just mentally in my head. But, yeah. So I am going to go over just some lessons that I've learned, which is going to cover this, and then we'll wrap up. Um, basically, I have a handful of regrets that I'm going to tell you guys about, so you're going to be able to get the answer to your question. So one is not being clear on my sacrifice. What is sacrifice, guys? Something you like that you give away for something better in the future. A very good definition. Yeah. So that could be time. That could be money, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important. I had a nutrition um, call me last week. And she's a single mom, recently divorced. And she said, Jessica, I just don't know how to do this. I, how are you doing it, being a mom and balancing everything? Um, and I just said to her first, you can't compare yourself to me. One, I'm not a single mom. And I'm not going to fully relate to you. It doesn't mean that you can't get anywhere that you want to get being a single mom. But you need to determine what your sacrifice is, guys. For me, there's people in this room that's willing to sacrifice more of their time. I think that's awesome. I would dig deep. You're never going to get that time back with your kids, ever. You're going to have to have some sacrifice. One thing you've done really well, though, is set up these systems so the time yes. you are at work, you are being efficient. So, okay. hey, from 9 to 5, I'm going to be as efficient as I possibly yes. can. You're going to work as much in that 8-hour time period as someone might be in 10 to 12 mm -hmm. because of the efficiencies you've set up. Yes, and you're exactly right. And that, let me be clear. I'm standing up here acting like I don't work hard. You guys, I work really, really hard. <laughs> and I never work under 40 hours a week. Um, and I do have systems in place that I did have to put in the time. I used to work a ton of hours. So I think that it's really important, though, for you guys to figure out what your sacrifice is in your life and go from there. Because I was really unclear on what I was willing to sacrifice. <coughs> Until I became clear on that, it helped me move forward. So you guys get clear and dig deep on what's, what your sacrifice is and create systems to be able to make that happen. Um, the biggest thing, too, is transactional versus relationship. Who here feels that they run a relationship-based business right now? You guys, I didn't forever. Ten years, you guys, I did not do it. It was all based on transactions, transactions. I'm going to tell you a story. I was about nine months pregnant, so I could not go on a listing appointment because who's going to hire a nine-month pregnant lady? <laughs> so I would set appointments for Dave Stoko to go on, and he would give me a percentage of the income. And I remember we were in base camp or morning ascent or something, and I sat down, and he's like, I got the listing. I'm like, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, they're losing their house. They're going through bankruptcy and all of this horrible <laughs> stuff. And let me be clear. Dave is very, when he was in the business, or maybe he still is, he was very transactional. Okay? And I was like, that is awesome. And he just looked at me like, horrible. You are a horrible lady. You know, he looked at me like, he was extremely transactional. And I didn't realize it at that time. I realize it now, obviously. I still remember how transactional I was. Also, we talk a ton about, we talk a lot about not being attached to the outcome. If you are relationship-based, you will not be attached to the outcome. Because you're going to do what's best for your client, not what's best for you. That goes away. Because I don't even, like, if a deal falls through, do you even get a reaction from me? Like, I don't really care. <laughs> really. I mean, that comes with transactions. I'm like, oh, we'll find them something different. I told my client last week, yeah, you should cancel. You're going to have a hard time selling. Don't buy it. It's because I don't care about the transaction. I care about the relationship. And let me be clear. I do run a business. I have transactional goals. Don't take it to it. You know, it still matters. But just focus on the people. Don't be so focused on the deal. 
it's really, really important. How many more people can you help this year versus how many deals am I going to do this year? Your business will change, I promise. Next is, who are you listening to? I'm talking about something a little bit different. What I mean by this, who are you getting business advice from? Oh my gosh, guys. Isn't it interesting in real estate that anyone can be? Anybody can coach you. <laughs> and it is, I had a coach. Um, she was her own coaching company. And she closed 100 to 150 closed transactions solely on expires and for sale by owners. That's all she did. And she was amazing at her skills, obviously. That's all she did. I went to Florida and stayed with her for a day and paid her to train me. And I remember always telling her, I just want an efficient business. I do not want to call, you know, like I want a business. I do not want to just be a real estate agent. I want a business. I hired the wrong coach, guys. Why am I hiring someone that is doing 100 transactions? Her phone never rings because she doesn't do any referral-based business. So find out what type of business you want and follow that person. Because I was, I, I was following the wrong people for too long. So I think it's really, really important. You decide for you if you want that path. And I'm not saying, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying, I called for sell my honors last week. I'm not saying I don't, that it's a bad thing to call them. I'm just saying be careful who you're following and make sure you're following the right people on the type of business that you want and the people that have done it and that have been there. I think it's really important. Um, for example, do you guys remember three-ish, four-ish years ago? There was a guy up here from he did a ton of business. Las you know? Vegas? So. He said he was the worst dad and husband and his health was all bad and everything. Yes! Yeah. So I'm sitting, yeah. oh my gosh. Whatever. So right here, this is so rude. I have fat ass mm -hmm. on my thing. Which yeah. is so rude. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is so rude. But I'm sitting right here oh and my. he's up here. It's amazing who we put on as, as a platform. Because this is what I mean by it. He was up here saying, I do tons of business. That's great. Oh, His agree. marriage was falling apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was broke. Mm -hmm. He was grossly overweight with lots of health problems. And he, I don't think he had saved any money because he made a ton of money, but didn't save any of the money. Guys, who are you following? Wait, what was his message? Well, he did a lot of deals. His gross was really big. He's a great prospector too. GSI. Yeah, it was a he great prospector. He knew how to work the phone, but he did not know how to work his life. And just, guys, I'm not standing up here trying to be no, mean to anyone. All I'm saying. I think everyone's got strengths. We can learn yeah. from someone like that. But you we know, can also learn. Well, just, you should have balance. We, we can also refer people to other coaches if they need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. We, we should well, have George, George Morris has <laughs> said for a long, long time, when it comes to business, yes, I'll but listen to my faith, but I'll never listen to my faith about where's the relationship. Yeah. So you guys choose what's best for you guys and we all, you know, and these are things that we can also disagree on and I'm okay with that. But I make sure that the people that I'm following, that I actually believe they're good human beings and they're doing it for the right reason and they're treating people good and it's not just about transactions. You guys do what you want, and it's okay if we disagree on that. Um, I'm a big believer in the pile theory. I'm just going to read this to you. So the pile theory is simply the idea that whoever achieves the most tangible results in a particular field would usually have the most to teach. With that in mind, if someone has a bigger pile than you, listen. If they have a sm smaller pile than you, don't. So same thing. If you are getting marriage counseling from someone, make sure they have probably a good marriage. <laughs> okay? So it's probably a good idea. And then just the last thing is money. You guys, I, Jared and I, have, we, we've always made good money in, what, in sales and, you know, that was not a struggle. Because we had nothing to show for. We spent everything we made. Everything. <coughs> and I think real estate's a real fancy place. It's all about fancy cars and 
I drive a fancy car, so I'm not trying to be a hypocrite here. But um, it is fancy, and it's really easy to spend a lot of money. And it's really easy to appear that you're doing better than you really are. You know, because we all focus on this gross number, which is not really what any of us take home, right? <laughs> It's a gross number that looks like, oh my gosh, they're doing amazing and they're not taking it home. I don't take home what I gross. And so I think we appear to be doing better than we are, even subconsciously. So we tend to spend a ton of money. I do. I am the biggest spender in the world. I, you guys, I seriously. No, she's changed. She's totally changed her ways. It's amazing. Guys, when she, she came home. I think it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. She said, "We got to do a budget." I said, "What? <laughs> Where are you?" Because <laughs> she yeah. had some new coaching in her life, and that's totally transformed our lives. Because no matter where you're at, I mean, everybody has a budget. Some are smaller, and some are larger. And so that yeah. that was amazing. Guys, my biggest advice to you: a lot of you in here are making great money. Save it. Save money. Put it back in your business. Save, save, save. Who here does a PL? and l Profit and loss for their business. Profit and loss? Well, I don't, it's not for my business, but that's my, I'm a financial controller. And you don't do a PL and l for your business? No, no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> 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 that's a different story. Okay, okay. <laughs> what, do ask, what do you ask about P&L? I said, what? I do P&L. I got you. So, <laughs> think about doing a P&L for your business. And look at an amount that you're going to save every single month <coughs> because it is really easy to spend everything you make. And just, it's honestly, that is my biggest regret. It is spending everything <coughs> that I make. And it's just silly. Focus on saving your money. It's super, super important. So, yes. Do you all do invest in real estate? You know, I. Program? Do I have in the past, and I sold it right before the crash, and I haven't invested again because I'm sick about prices right now, but I will <laughs> one day. Yeah. I'm on my coach that I'm with is not a believer in that because it distracts you from your business. So it's hard. So no. Currently, right now, I'm not. So what did you believe in? Get a big, big house. Yeah. Uh, and put it in a 401k and stocks yeah. and possibly a rental property or two. Yeah, I mean, I think investing in real estate is, is great. I just think that um, as long as, I know for me, I flipped homes for a while when I was staying home with my little girl. And what I can tell you is, and I had a couple ski rentals, and it distracts you from what you're doing. So if you can do it without it distracting you from your business, because this is my main goal, is my business. And I want to take it to another level. So um, that's why I don't invest, not necessarily that I don't think it's and that I never will. Just wondering what you're doing for retirement. Yeah, investing exactly. right now. Yeah. What? It's a huge distraction. Yeah, it's a big distraction. And basically, I'm just trying to stay in my lane and not, I'm distracted enough by everything in my world. So I don't want any other distractions. So if it's a distraction, I basically don't do it. Yeah, Rob? I was just going to say one thing. Um, one of the things that, that I deal with on a daily basis, I, I receive phone calls from whether it be other agents or um, your clients that are calling because they've got a concern or, or, or an issue or a problem with, with, with the agent. And one thing I would you know, testify about Jessica, who she is and what she does, I never receive any of those phone calls complaining, concerned about her, what she's doing. So, you know, she's up here talking about something she's passionate about. You can, it, it, the end result, you can, you know it, because there is never any issue that is coming up that is being brought around her business. So, well, great job. Rob. Thank you. Awesome. I hope you guys can get really clear on just what you are wanting for your particular business. And it doesn't have to be like mine. I mean, that's okay. And just get really clear on what you want to do with your business and make sure you're following the right people. That's it. Have a great week, guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
liabilities, you know, weaknesses. I'm not the best at this. It just makes yeah. it so much more really relatable. So I appreciate it. Great job. Thank you. Thank you again. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, for sure.